Hello everyone and welcome to the session. My name is Dmitry Bilayev and I am Staff Solutions Architect at VMware Tansu Labs. VMware Tansu Labs is a former Pivotal Labs and we are part of uh, the VMware Consulting Forces. I work for a part of Tansu Labs, which is called Application Services. And we are different from other VMware consultants in a way that our focus is not to support company's product directly, but uh, to help VMware customers to modernize legacy applications toward uh, modern cloud-native microservices-based architecture. And working with different teams from different industries, different geographies throughout Europe, I observed that the statement that each microservice should have its own database is not questioned anymore. It is taken as given. Um, and in today's talk, I'm going to challenge the statement. I've prepared two examples, which will help us to see how robust this statement is against varieties and complexities of the real world. But before we start with these examples, uh, we have to clarify some terminology. And uh, what is important for today's session is to understand the difference between a term bounded context and a term uh, microservice. So a bounded context is, is a logical construct. It's a grouping of cohesive set of functionality covering one business domain. That is actually the reason why the term bounding context is often interchangeable with the term business domain. A microservice, on the other hand, is a physically deployable piece of software. And in many cases, one bounding context is implemented as exactly one microservice. But this is not always the case. Often there are technical reasons to split a bounded context into multiple deployable units, microservices. For example, we may want to separate online services from housekeeping jobs running periodically. There is a very good blog post describing different factors one can apply to decide whether something should be built as a microservice the name of this blog post is Should That Be a Microservice? Keep these six factors in mind. And you can find it on the Tansu website, the address of the site I put in the bottom right corner of the slide. So keeping in mind that a bounded context is not equivalent to a microservice, we can start with the first example. So let's imagine we are developing a payment system and a part of the system is a transaction domain. So this domain provides information about all transactions for a selected account and some functionality around that. So as a part of this domain, we have to implement online services exposing REST API, consumed by a web UI, and we also have to implement a data feed process which imports transaction data into the system. So the transaction data is made available as a file on a file share, and we have to monitor this file share periodically and if you find a new file, then we start the import process. And this is a pretty common case, especially in banking industry. So a straightforward solution is to put all the logic of the transaction domain into one microservice. And this is a working solution, of course. But there are some um, downsides of, in this solution. In a real-world scenario, we will have multiple instances of this microservice running simultaneously because we want to support a high number of concurrent users, we want our online services to be highly available and because of some other reasons as well. But the data feed process should be executed only on one instance at a time. So with this solution, we are forced to implement a master election solution, which is not a rocket science, of course, but it's a decent piece of software which we have to implement 
and to maintain. Another potential issue with this solution is that through combining online services with a data feed job with the offline process, uh, we kind of endanger our online services. Normally, availability requirements on online services are quite different from availability requirements on the offline processes. Right? And we may have a bug in our data feed process, or we may just underestimate uh, amount of data coming into the system. And our data feed process will crash and kill the whole instance, taking down the online services as well. So a better solution in my eyes is to split uh, this business logic into two microservices, one containing online services and another one containing just this data feed job. But if you follow the statement we started the session with, then we end up with this solution with online services microservice connected to database one and job microservice connected to the database two. And now we face a not trivial task to synchronize data between these two databases. And I think everyone here agrees that this is not an improvement over a solution on the previous slide. A and the problem for this complexity, the reason for this complexity is actually the database two, which we don't really need. So what we can do, we can utilize the existing REST API to push the data into the system. It also means that the same validation logic, business logic will be applied on all the data coming into the system. So what I wanted to show here is that because these two microservices are from the same bounding context, they naturally operate on the same data. And as such, they have to share the same database. In this particular case, the sharing is implemented through attaching the database to one microservice and using its online API by the other one. So it shows us that the statement that each microservice should have its own database is not 100% correct. In my opinion, the statement should be rewritten saying that each bounded context should have its own database, not microservice. But the systems we build can be more complex than in this example. So let's take a look at the second one. And this is another um, system I worked on just recently. So we developed a system for logistic company and a part of the system was a bounded context responsible for uh, forecasting of empty container stock. Uh, and this boundary context provided a REST API again, consumed by a web UI, and it also contained a job calculating the probability distribution table describing what is the probability that a full container, which was given uh, to a customer at a location A, will be returned as an empty at a location B in X days. And this table was used by online services to calculate stock forecast for certain location on the fly. So I'm not going to dive into details about the business logic here, it's pretty complex, but what is important for, for this session is the fact that the calculation of this uh, probability distribution table was based on a big amount of data. So we did this calculation based on a one-year history of all container movements uh, of this company. Right? And if you follow the same design that we had in the previous example, then the system will look like that. And again, there are several um, like disadvantages in this design. So first of all, a big amount of data had to be transferred through an additional hop. Like we have to transfer data from database to the online services microservice and then to the job microservice. Um, also, it is quite difficult to follow the probability distribution calculation flow because the flow is split into several pieces now. The data retrieval is on the online services side, then the calculation itself is in the job microservice, and then persistence of the result of this calculation is in the online services again. And 
Uh, another disadvantage is that we, in this case, we have to develop extra endpoints in the online services microservice just to support the job microservice. So this solution is not optimal. But if we agree that a database is a property of a bounded context, why not to access it directly from both microservices? Like that? Uh, this is a simpler solution, in my opinion, and it also helps us to avoid all the downsides mentioned before. And yes, I do propose to access the same database from both microservices. So a brief remark for people who feel strongly about clean ownership of data. No need to worry, it's there. The tables which are written by online services microservice are only readable by, by the job one <coughs> and vice versa. So you can even create two different users with different uh, rights for, for these two microservices. Right. <coughs> but if we go for this solution, we'll face another problem. How to avoid code duplication. These both microservices, they will touch the same tables. And at least the data access layer will be the same in both of them. And as you all probably know, uh, the code duplication is one of the deadly sins in software development and it would be good to avoid it somehow. And a solution for this is to use a monorepository. Um, so if you put all microservices um, belonging to one bounding context into one monorepo, we will be able to reuse the same pieces of code. So at the runtime, these pieces of code will be deployed twice in, all mic in both microservices, but from the source control point of view, there will be no code duplication. And the question is um, how we can structure this monorepository in the best possible way. Some of my former colleagues from Pivotal Labs came up with some guidelines on evolutionary development of application architecture. They called their vision App Continuum and they documented it on the www.appcontinuum.io website. And one of their ideas is that if you are at the early stage of a greenfield product development, then the boundaries between domains are not clear yet. And this whole system is in a state of a constant change. And at this stage, a premature split into microservices living in separate repositories would significantly slow, slow down uh, your development pace. And what they proposed for this case, they proposed to use a monorepository for the whole system. And they came up with a clever structure of this monorepository, a structure that will help to extract microservices later on. So what they proposed, they proposed uh, to have uh, at the top level, applications, components, and databases directories. And they propose to put every application into a directory beneath applications directory. They propose to put every shared component into a directory beneath components directory. And components are shared by applications. So you can see each, each component as, as a library. Right. But because these libraries are in the same repository, they are not individually releasable. And there is no heavy dependency management process connected with them. Right. And it's all based on a multi-module Gradle or Maven build, where every application and every shared component is a module. And as you can imagine, this project structure is a perfect fit for our use case. If we are in a situation when we split one bounded context into several microservices, we can put all of them in one monorepository following a continuum structure and avoid any code duplication through it. This is an example how it may look like for uh, Spring Boot-based applications. 
but you can find like your structure that which works best for you. Um, and actually, if you think about it, this is exactly what we have if we implement a straightforward solution. The very first one I presented, like when we put all the logic of one bounding context into one microservice. The difference is that the um, project is structured slightly differently, and another difference is that uh, several deployable units will be produced out of this, out of this repository. Uh, and just a brief summary at the end. So don't be afraid to split the bounded context into several microservices, if you have a good reason for that. Database belongs to a bounded context, not to a microservice. If possible, use online API to access a shared database. If not possible, access database directly from multiple microservices, if they belong to the same bounding context. And be aware of the App Continuum project structure, which is a perfect fit for situation when you split one bounding context into several microservices. And that's actually all what I wanted to share today. Thank you very much for attending the session and enjoy this great conference. <laughs>